Hello and welcome. How are you doing today? My name is Lynn and today I'll be making a couple of actually three Halloween treat boxes and I'm going to use the Tonic Studios craft kit. I forget, I don't know what number this is, but it's called the Flower Power gift box and I picked this up during the last vault sale so this isn't an item that you can uh, go out and purchase although Tonic Studios does I think have I think they released a box die set that in terms of construction is very similar to this so you might be able to um, to still find that if I can find it I'll, I'll try to link to it in the description box below but what I really love about this set and the reason why I chose it is because you can create a variety of different size boxes and there's actually two different variations. One variation is in the height of the box and uh, that's represented by the die that will cut out your side pieces. And the other variation is in the size and shape of the uh, base of the box. So I've pulled out all three base dies so you see um, here we have the hexagon there's a pentagon and there's also a square and depending on which shape or size base you use that will determine the number of side uh, pieces you'll need to die cut and so I'll, I'll do all of the die cutting kind of off camera, but essentially for the square base, you're, you'll want four side pieces. For the pentagon, you'll want five. And for the hexagon, you'll want six. I'm going to be creating all three because I'm going to make one box for each of um, my brother's uh, kids, but as a family. So one of my brothers has four kids, another has three, and the last has two. So it works out really well to kind of have a small, medium, and large box. And what I'll probably end up doing just to save on shipping is I'll probably send them all to my mom. <laughs> and it'll be really obvious to her who gets which box because they'll be differently sized. And, um, and the kids are all really good about sharing. So, so I don't think that they will be upset that they're not getting individual boxes. So, um, I've die cut the, uh, everything really out of, uh, the new Spellbinders cardstock that, that I picked up recently. And, the two shades of green I have here, the darker one is fern and the lighter one is rainforest. The um, detailed uh, cut uh, for the leaves, there's actually three different designs um, and three different kind of outer borders and three different designs that Verso dies that cut in. And so you have a lot of variation uh, in that way too. And this, um, these two die cuts have been cut out of fern and they combined will create a little bit, not quite a lid, but just like a decorative top to the box. And what I like to do is um, position the two die cuts so that the leaves are staggered and they look a little bit more round uh, and full and once they are in the position that I like then I'll place um, this die which is the same shape as the base just smaller so for the pentagon you'll use the small pentagon and for your uh, square base, you'll use the small square. For your hexagon, you'll use the small hexagon. When you die cut these petals, um, you'll notice that the die will actually do a, um, a little bit of a deboss where you get kind of a crossbar. You can kind of see it there, a little plus sign. You want to line up the little plus sign that's on your die in those deboss lines and center it kind of as best you can. And so that way you can um, get that positioned correctly, but then also by die cutting both layers at the same time, when you go to kind of glue these together, then you'll know the they'll stack correctly and the leaves will, will stagger to have that nice full uh, flower. And 
the Spellbinders cardstock is 100 pound cover, so pretty thick, and the die cut through both layers easy peasy. So really, really nice quality dies, um, which uh, I've come to expect from Tonic. They they put out very quality, um, very quality uh, supplies. So really, really love that. And the um, while I'm talking about cardstock, the orange cardstock that I've used. So I've got persimmon is the lighter orange and terracotta is the darker orange and the only reason why I die cut of two different colors is just because I um I couldn't get all three out of one sheet of cardstock and since I had already cut into um both of these to make my <laughs> swatches um I wanted to use them both up rather than uh, start a second sheet on uh, any one particular color the other thing that I do um which I don't know if, if necessarily you have to but especially since there's not going to be anything super heavy in these boxes, but I did die cut the base twice. And, and you'll see when I construct it um, um, how I use both. But the reason why I did it is, um, one, it tidies up the um, construction so that you don't see any glue tabs either from um, the outside or the inside of the box. But um, more practically, one reason why you might want to do it is because it does also make the base of your box more sturdy since there'll be two layers of cardstock down there. And so if you're making this box and, and you do plan to put something that might be a little bit a little bit heavy in it, then um, then that might be a good option. I think for me, with a couple pieces of candy, it's not it's not going to be too terribly heavy. Um, so I I did it more for the aesthetics of it. And what's really nice about using um, the Spellbinders cardstock is because it is a, a decently heavy weight. It's a hundred pound cover, and so I feel like for box and for construction, it it can be sort of the base. I don't feel like I have to use my hundred and twenty and then kind of just decorate it with um, the additional uh, various mats and layers that you do have as an option um, because all of the all of the segments in these um, side pieces here they do have a verso die um, and a an outline die to cut a mat out of so you can um, add decorative elements to um, pretty up <laughs> the the sides if you want since this is for Halloween, I, I have something else in mind and you'll see you'll see that um, once I have all of the boxes constructed. Constructing the boxes is pretty simple. Um, what the way I like to do it, of course, there's going to be a lot of different approaches. So, so you can find the method that works best for you. I like to use liquid adhesive because it's going to be nice and permanent and um, even though this isn't something that I think the the kids will keep I mean they're gonna get into the candy and then just toss the box I'm sure but I still want to make sure that it, it holds up okay and so um, liquid adhesive is especially for something if you do if you are making a project that that you want to last a good long time or that you think might be um, something interactive that needs to kind of withstand that, then liquid adhesive is always a really good option. I like to uh, um, attach all the sides first and you'll see me construct all three so uh, don't worry if if uh, if you missed it on this one but I do like to attach all the sides first and then I'll attach um, the bottom from the outside and as you saw just a moment ago, I attach a second base piece to the inside. And that second base piece covers up those glue tabs. So even when you're looking from the inside of the box, it's going to be a nice finish uh, since you won't see those glue tabs. Then um, with all of the petal design uh, complete, then I uh, 
attach those two pieces. And you saw a moment ago, I just slipped that sort of top piece right um, on top uh, of the box. And that little um, segment at the top that has the hole punch through it is what will um, kind of insert itself through that top piece. And so that's why you have the different shaped die uh, that you need to cut through that top piece because it uh, perfectly matches the number of side pieces that you have. For um, so again, here's the this one is the um, penta, pentagon shaped uh, base, and I attached all of the side pieces first and got them all in a straight line with the help of um, lining it up on my grid mat. And if you wanted, you could you could be attaching them to the base, and, you know, one by one as well. Um, whatever whatever I think method works. Uh, easiest for you. I would just suggest to use a strong glue, whether it's going to be a strong liquid PVA glue like what I'm using. I prefer Lanco pH neutral. And um, and then burnishing really, really well. Uh, an alternative glue would be maybe red, uh, red line tape or a score tape. Those would be really great if you don't want to uh, mess with the liquid glue. I would though suggest that um, if you are using a liquid glue to um, to try to get that glue evenly spread out across the glue tab, which is why it's a little bit messy, but I, I am trying to smear um, that glue fully across the um, glue tab so that I do get glue all the way all the way to the edges. And so I'm using my grid mat at the bottom. I'm being careful to kind of line that up with one of my lines. I'm trying to be careful to line the sides up so that it's um, 90 degrees also. And that will just kind of help make sure that all of these will get attached um, in, a straight, in a straight line so that when you go to attach the base, it's all going to, to fit nicely. With the even numbered sides, so the square and this one, the um, hexagon, what you can do is you can actually fold it down and attach that last tab um, completely flat and, and burnish that way. Can't quite do that with the pentagon because it, it doesn't have an even number of sides in order to, to fold down flat. But with the hexagon and the square, you can, you can use that approach. And um, this is why using a liquid glue for me is preferred, especially since I'm doing it this way where I'm attaching the base last. And with so many segments you're juggling, um, the liquid adhesive is kind of nice for having that little bit of extra time to nudge things around a little bit and, and get everything to kind of line up just just right. And of course, burnishing really well so that your glue makes really good contact. In the case of a liquid adhesive, it also helps to kind of really spread that out and make sure that you don't get any um, any um, bumpy areas or, or anything like that. And so once um, my the top uh, section here is put together, I did curl it a little bit with my bone folder just to give it a little bit of dimension. I don't know how well that's going to hold up in shipping, but it's a nice touch, I think, to, to just give these petals a little bit of shape. And you can curl them upwards or, or downwards. I think it, it looks good either way. And... What's neat about this style of box is it's almost like a one of those drawstring um, bags. <laughs> so these holes are are meant for you to string some. I'm using ribbon, but you could use twine or um, whatever you have that that you think would look nice. And um, and you want to cut it long enough so that you can open, you know, open up all of those tabs um, in order to get into the box without the 
uh, the ends of your ribbon or twine, whatever you're using, without having that slip through the hole. Um, and maybe that doesn't really matter, especially if they're not going to really keep the box. So, um, but I just made sure to really cut it long enough so that one, I could tie a bow. Um, and then two, when they open it, um, there's just a lot of slack there so that it's, um, they can open it wide, open the box wide and not have to worry too much about the, uh, ribbon slipping all the way through and having to kind of feed that through again. So I've done that for all three and the last touches, I'm going to change these boxes into little uh, jack-o'-lanterns. And so I actually have a die set from Cat Scrappiness that is their um, pumpkin slash uh, jack-o'-lantern shaker die set. And in that die set, there's actually, I think there's either, I think there's four different jack-o'-lantern faces that you can cut out. And I chose um, the scary ones going uh, to my nephews. <laughs> and then the two more friendly jack-o'-lanterns are going to um, uh, my nieces and uh, and the younger kitties that I, I don't want to scare too too much with a with an angry jack-o'-lantern face. As I attach these, now might be a good time to uh, mention that I did cross over the 2,500 subscriber mark here on YouTube not too long ago, and in a few days I'll be posting my giveaway um, video, and I'll be giving away three um, bundles of crafty goodies. And I wanted to offer, if you're still watching and you're listening to this, I'd like to offer you a hidden giveaway opportunity. So um, this will count for an extra entry into my 2,500 uh, subscriber giveaway, which um, check my channel in, in a couple days. You won't be able to miss that, that video. Be clearly marked giveaway. And all you have to do is just leave me a comment in um, the description box below for this video. And just let me know if you are big into Halloween or not. Um, this is a hidden giveaway, so it's meant to just be a thank you to you for watching this video. I know if you are... Um, a big fan of Tonic Studios. I haven't been crafting with the latest kits uh, lately, but I want to uh, thank you for sticking around with <laughs> with me. I know that um, I used to craft with them pretty regularly, and I've skipped a ton, and also just haven't had the time to craft with the the ones that I have um, kept. So thanks for for still watching, and um, you know my way of thanking you and showing my appreciation to you is um, giving you this opportunity to uh, have an extra entry into my um, giveaway later this month. Please don't mention giveaway when you um, leave a comment. I want this to just be between us and and not. I don't want somebody to kind of casually see in the comments that there that this is a giveaway opportunity. I uh, because I want to thank you for for watching to the end essentially and um, and so I'll know if you just leave a comment and let me know whether or not you're big into Halloween that that will count as an extra entry into my um, giveaway later this month. And when that video does come out, you can uh, comment again on my giveaway video for another, another chance to win. Thanks so much, and until next time, happy crafting, and have a fantastic day. Bye!